Support. Mega. Red. Van. Hill. Hello, and welcome to the Mega Bread Van channel. So today we're not going to be talking about Mega Bread Van because we're here in the Normandy countryside. Now why are we in the Normandy countryside? Because um, it's actually the school holidays at the moment and we're away for a couple of nights and we're staying in a British double decker. Wow. You have to forgive me because I've forgotten my uh, external mic. In fact, I took the adapter with me, um, but I didn't take the mic, so hopefully this sounds okay. So yes, this is a genuine London double-decker. Unlike a lot of double-deckers in France, uh, it tend to be painted red and uh, pretend to be London double-deckers. This one is a 1985 Metrobus, and you can see in the registration it's B241WL. We'll have a look at my computer later on so we can talk a bit about the history of the bus and um, I'd like to say thank you very much to Ulrich, the owner of the bus, who told me a bit about history in France and we'll talk about that later as well. So at the moment we can't go in the cab, um, it's locked, um, but there's a reason for that, it's because the bus actually is still in working order, uh, even though it is um, very much parked up and got a, a little terrace built around it the motor still functions and so obviously we don't really want uh, people wandering around in the cab um, when things still work so Ulrich is right it's a good idea to perhaps block it off so if we look round round the back here you can see everything's in very good condition. Um, it's in the original livery uh, that it was sold in I think which was um, city sightseeing but uh, yeah um, everything's all good and it's in a very very nice location here in the Normandy countryside so I think we'll go and have a look aboard. So I'll give you a quick tour uh, inside, excuse our mess. So. We're coming by the middle doors because, as I've just said, the uh, the driver's position is locked away. And to be able to get in and close the door, because it's a little bit cold today. So if we come in here, let's put the light on so we can see what we're doing. We've got a dartboard and a panel hiding the cab. And uh, this is just like a, a sort of storage area, I suppose. You can you can store your clothes here, and in our case, we store our luggage. And then, if we come round, we've got a lovely seating area. It's really quite good. Um, we've got flashing um, LED lights under the seats, and we've got Bluetooth in the light at the top there. We've got a TV. Uh, we've got a coffee maker and the microwave in the fridge. There we go, a decent sized fridge and a heater. Um, well, a heater. Um, it works. It works fairly well. Um, you need uh, to wear a jacket or something, I think, to stay warm when it's uh, you know cold out at night. Uh, at the moment, it's what beginning of March, so yeah, it's um, kind of okay it's okay upstairs is actually quite a lot warmer so we'll have a look at that in a minute uh, but meantime i wanted to to go through the history of the bus itself so i haven't really found out a great deal so what i've done is actually um i had a word with a friend of mine called richard richard turner uh who lives up in sheffield and he told me a little bit of background about the bus as well and i've looked online so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually film my laptop screen so I can just show you a bit about uh, what I found out so far. Hopefully you can see everything okay on the screen. Um, obviously these photographs are copyright of each person that's put them on there, mostly on Flickr. So I wanted to film the screen so to to not have the pictures in my film. 
uh, and it wears names, I'll try to mention them, okay? So, well, first of all, um, we've got bus lists on the web. So we can look at um, M1241, uh, new hours, uh, in April 1985. So, yeah, uh, like I said to Ulrich, it's a 1985 bus, and he said, yes, it is. Um, so apparently, uh, I was talking to my friend Richard that I mentioned earlier, and uh, he told me that the, the bus actually uh, moved on to City Sightseeing for the York tour. But there are a few photographs uh, on um, Flickr. So you've got uh, this one in City Sightseeing colours, you can see. And I think there's somewhere you've got, um, you've got it in the original London Transport livery, like this one. Try to look at authors, just to be fair. So that's John Coxford, apparently. So thank you, John Coxford, for your photo. And that's Mega Anorak. So thank you, Mega Anorak, for your photo, because I've just mentioned it on my film. Uh, it's always right to mention names of, of people who have taken these photographs. So it's only fair. So there's some interior shots on here. I'm trying to find one where I can see the seats properly. Uh, that one's not the seats it had, I don't think. The ones that Ulrich showed me. Uh, were the original seats but Richard just told me that um, in fact he thinks the seats actually came from South Yorkshire because uh, they're the sort of brownie sort of check pattern and I'm not too sure whether they came from South Yorkshire whether they came from London or not but uh, probably somebody can help me confirm them or well, confirm that sorry um, so here you've got a photograph it's not a very clear one there we go so you can see there that's the pattern that uh, Ulrich showed me so when he got the bus it still had these seats these original pattern seats and not the city sightseeing ones but there seems to be a bit of a mix there probably go on to um, the history of the bus more recently so yesterday when we arrived I had a quick word with the the owner of this metro bus and he told me that um, he bought it um, probably a couple of years ago and he refurbished it during the the lockdowns um, and turned it into this uh, mobile home. But previously it, um, previously it had been um, owned by a, a company in Paris that was offering language lessons and apparently that didn't quite work out. So... Uh, that's why the bus was sold to him in the first place. So I'm not sure what it's done before being in Paris. Um, no idea. But uh, if anybody knows, uh, B241WL, uh, then drop me a, a comment uh, below, uh, at the bottom of the video. And also I'll put the links to, to Ulrich's um, sites. He's got one on Facebook. It's called Buckingham Bus and another one on um, on Instagram. So if you want to uh, take a look at his sites, he's got some other photographs on there of the bus. And, uh, well, I think what we'll do now is just have a little tour upstairs and, and show you the bedrooms. So as you can see, we've got the, the big table down here, seating area, which I've just showed you, before I started waffling about the history of the bus. So now I'm going to take you upstairs the bear with me because I've got a bit of a bad back and um, getting upstairs is an interesting thing for me. <clears throat> All part of getting old I suppose. Uh, so if we come upstairs, if I come through to the central bit of the bus then we can see everything a bit easier. So here in the central bit you've got a, a charging point, uh, a cupboard and, and quite a bit of space actually, it's quite spacious around here so we come through here we've got the first of the bedrooms this is the smaller bed it's where my daughter's been sleeping mademoiselle likes her switch so i'm just open the the curtain so we can see out the front a little bit there we are so there you see, there's no there's no periscope left. If we look up there, the periscope's not open, but the mirror's still there. 
So all, all the panelling, it's been there to obviously add some insulation, I suppose, and uh, it's mostly like that all around the bus. Uh, Ulrich said to me that because most of it's aluminium inside, there's not really a lot of uh, insulation needed, really. And I think he's right, because it was a bit toasty last night. We put the, the heaters on, there's one there. There's another one in the other room, and it was fine, perfectly fine. And a good night's sleep. So I come through to the master bedroom, so to speak. So you've got a full-size bed at the back. Uh, I'm not going to crawl over the bed to go and open the curtains over there now, but uh, I think you can get the the idea of the space. It's really very good. Very impressive. So uh, yeah, it's uh, you got the original signs from the it's sightseeing days. There you go. No standing. No standing upstairs, which is the same for all the woodhackers in in Britain. So I'm trying to get downstairs without ruining the footage. London mat. And we'll take a little wander outside and do a few more exterior shots I think and then we'll wind things up because we're going to be off doing that sightseeing bit. Today we're planning to go to, to Homfleur. So the bus is sort of not too far from Rouen, um, Rouen, Evreux, that sort of direction. So here you've got the, the bathroom, the sauna, an exercise room, you've got uh, weights and things in there. So if you come here when the weather's a bit better, you can do some exercise. So I'm back home uh, a couple of days after our visit to Normandy and enjoying a nice cup of tea. I'm going a bit forward in time because I've done a little bit of research about the bus and I'll, I'll go through that and then we'll go back to going back in time and back to Normandy. The bus is uh, well, an MCW Metro bus, I'll just hold you that. I've typed DR101 stroke 17 uh, with a Garner 6 LXB engine and the Voy 3 speed gearbox. It was new in 19, April 1985 uh, to London Transport and then later on that year uh, London Transport became London Buses. In 1994 uh, there was the general privatisation and uh, the company became London General and eventually Go Ahead London. By the year 2000, oh I forgot the fleet number as well, uh, M124 M1241. So M1241 headed off to uh, the dealer Enzyme of Perfleet in Essex, who have dealt with a lot of London transport buses. If you know uh, of the company, they dealt with a lot of the XDMS Daimler Fleet lines. Anyway, I digress. Uh, after that, they sold it to Top Line Travel in York, who apparently were responsible for the city sightseeing contract. Um, in that, in that city. Top line refurbished the bus, uh, painted the interior blue and called it Emily. So that's really nice. Uh, it was the only closed top sightseeing vehicle in the um, top line fleet for the city sightseeing. So it was used mainly um, on off-season tours but a lot of the time it was actually used in service on schools contracts and university shuttles, race course shuttles, that sort of thing. In 2008, Transdef took over Top Line Travel and they gave Emily fleet number 4004, 4004. so that's uh, a bit sad. In March 2011, the bus had been reported as earmarked for scrap, but apparently it was then sold on to several other owners before being exported to France. Uh, I've no date for when it was exported to France, uh, and I wonder if possibly Danny Chabord was in involved. He was, um, I think he still is, or was, uh, a dealer in British buses in 
exporting them to France and then being sold on to various other places. Uh, I think he even imported um, a PD3 which ended up in Martinique as um, a shop. So it came to France by 2015, so going on four years, it was with a language school um, teaching various languages apparently on the outskirts of Paris which is where I am uh, I don't know whereabouts on the outskirts of Paris if it's from the south of Paris I'll be interested to know because that's where I am Ulrich, um, the owner of M1241 as was he bought it from the language school someone drove it uh, to his house and he's based in, in Normandy in a village called uh, saint philippe sur ville so he um, basically installed it at the bottom of his garden a very big garden, uh, drove it down a very steep slope, uh, he showed me a video of that, very precarious but uh, he managed to get it uh, through okay to its resting place now and so it became booking on bus, he converted it during the pandemic, Re he removed all of the seats, uh, he showed me some photographs of the seats in situ and some of the seats uh, having sort of South Yorkshire PTE type moquette uh, which he sold uh, so the seats went uh, some of them apparently appeared in advertising for Chanel you know the famous uh, cosmetics firm when I last uh, spoke to him uh, he said to me that he was putting or tried to put up the engine for sale so it's a guy in the 6LXB from what I know it's still running it's still okay it's no problems with it the bus is effectively a runner at the moment although he's told me that he doesn't plan on uh, uh, putting it back on the road again so it's, it's going to be that's going to be his resting place in his garden so uh, it was a bit sad but um, at least it's uh, living another life being useful so I think we'll go back to Normandy so thanks for watching the video I think we'll wind things up there and uh, normal service will be resumed with Mega Bread Run um, we're in a bit of a hurry actually because we're only here for two nights uh, so today as I said uh, we're off to Honfleur um, and probably make it as far as Deauville or Cabourg on the Normandy coast we're only about an hour away from those places and tomorrow on the way home we'll call in at Rouen um, I'm hoping to see if I can take some bus photographs there while I'm there we'll see uh, weather's predicted to be a bit rainy but uh, yeah so we're back to the normal channel it's nice to have a little excursion and, and film something different um, but we're back to the front panel on Mega Bread Van next time I hope so thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed the reviews of uh, B241WL here in the Normandy countryside and be sure to look up uh, Ulrich um, and visit his page on Facebook and uh, his other page on Instagram and why not come and have a stay so take care of yourselves and see another video take care bye so we didn't make it to Honfleur but we're in Deauville so I thought I'd just do the end of the video showing you how far away the sea is it's very pretty and it's not actually very cold I don't know who Morgan is So I think after a bit of a traipse we finally got towards the sea. Uh, can't really go all the way to the sea because there's too many lakes and rivers of water, whatever you want to call them. So I think we'll bring that to an end. This little bonus footage of being in Deauville. Thanks for watching and see you back in the Paris region. See you then, bye.